for today's lesson, it is intended for the uh, PSWD of international students. Our lesson for today is bacterial physiology. Let's we'll study about bacterial structure and metabolism. Bacterial structure. You have to understand that bacteria are prokaryotes. They are cells that lack nuclei and organelles, which will distinguish them from true cells or the eukaryotes. The true cells are like those of algae, fungi, protozoa, plants, and animals. And the size of bacteria from range from a very small at 0.2 micrometer, especially those that belong to the mycoplasma species, to 3 micrometers, that is your bacillus anthracis. Your E. coli is about 1 micrometer in diameter, which if we compare to the RBCs, which are, the RBCs are around 8 micrometer in diameter. And it's noteworthy that gram-positive, remember that gram-positive will always have a thick cell wall and they will turn purple. And gram-negative will have a thin cell wall and will stain red. Gram-resistant bacteria, especially those of the mycobacterium and microplasma species, will stain poorly or not at all with gram stain. So those are your gram-resistant bacteria, your mycobacterium and your mycoplasma. For the bacterial structure, you have to understand this, that your gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria have similar internal structures, but they will structurally be dissimilar cell and here is a very nice uh, table that, dis uh, that distinguishes your prokaryotic cells with your eukaryotic cells as to their characteristics, like your prokaryotic is from 0.5 to 3 micrometer, while your eukaryotic cells usually are more than 5 micrometers. The cell wall of your prokaryotic will have complex structures which are composed of protein, peptidoglycan, and lipids. And in your eukaryotic cells, only in fungal and plant cells that this uh, cell wall composition differs from that of the bacterial cell wall. The plasma or the cytoplasmic membrane of your prokaryotic cells contains no exterols except, so there's an exception in your mycoplasma species, while your eukaryotic cells thus, thus will contain, will contain sterols. For the nuclear membrane, the nuclear membrane of your prokaryotic cells, they are absent while in your eukaryotic cells, they are present. For the genome, usually uh, the, your prokaryotic cells, your bacteria, will have circular DNA molecule in their nucleoid while your eukaryotic cells will have multiple linear mo DNA molecules in their nucleus. Organelles. The organelles will include your mitochondria, Golgi complex, and the plasmic reticulum. The organelles of your prokaryotic cells are absent, while your eukaryotic cells, they are all present. The ribosomes in your prokaryotic cells are composed of 70S and it composed of your 50S and 30S subunits while your eukaryotic cells will have 80S that is your 60S plus 40S subunits and how do these uh, cells divide? how do they differ? Your, the cell division in your prokaryotic cells will divide via binary fission, while your eukaryotic cells will divide via mitosis and meiosis. So here are the different uh, cell shapes okay, of your uh, prokaryotic cells. We call a, a bacteria a coccus if it is a spher spherical in shape. If they will 
be forming a, a, a chain, they will be called your streptococcus. Your bacillus are those cells that are bacteria that are rad in shape, an example of which is your Escherichia coli. Your spirochetes will have a snake-like uh, configuration, especially uh, your example of your spirochetes is your treponema. Your cocobacilli, so it's a combi it looks like a bacillus and a cocci, so this is your cocobacilli. An example of your cocobacilli is your bordatella pertussis. Some uh, prokaryotes can be filament filamentous in shape or mold like, like your nocardia and your actinomyces. Diplococci are those uh, bacteria that will always come in pairs or diplococci. An example of this will be your Neisseria and streptococci. As I mentioned earlier, they will appear in chain like your streptococcus. And some cocci will appear in clusters like grapes, grape-like cluster. There are your uh, Staphylococcus. And here is a, a good, very good example of your uh, bacterial cell structure. So we have your capsule, the plasma membrane, the linear DNA, the 70S ribosomes, so then we can have uh, mesosomes, some bacteria will have uh, structures to aid their motility and even their attachment. They are called your flagellum or sometimes fimbri or sometimes pili. Okay, so this is the cell wall. Okay, it contains uh, an outer membrane, a capsule, and lipoprotein layer. So the, the gram positive and gram negative. Uh, bacterial structures, they are the plasma membrane are similar in both bacteria, both types of bacteria, but the cell wall is more complex in your gram negative than in your gram positive. Your gram positive will have will be thicker, your gram negative will be thinner. Yeah, so motility of bacteria can be uh, uh, can the motility can be given through the the presence of your flagellum pili, which are short and thinner than flagella, uh, which are, these are, uh, the pili are both pas, uh, are present in both your gram negative and your gram positive, and usually the pili are the ones that are responsible for the transmission of resistant genes. Okay. This is another uh, table that, uh, compares your gram positive and gram negative okay uh, as to their characteristics either structural and functional so the outer membrane of your bacteria in your gram positive bacteria are absent while these are present in your gram negative so your the capsule is thick in among your gram positive and thin in your gram negative and that capsule is made usually made up of your peptidoglycan. It is noteworthy that you should understand that your gram-positive doesn't contain a lipopolysaccharide, a lipid and sugar coating, while your, it is present among your gram-negative bacteria. Tecoic acids are mostly present among gram-positive and they are absent in your gram-negative. Uh, pili, flagella, and capsule are present in some species, while it is in gram negative, it is present in some, also in some species. The difference of your gram positive and gram negative as to functionality. Uh, the gram positive are very sensitive to lysosomal sensitivity, to lysosomes, so they are easily digested, while your gram negative, they are largely resistant, that's why they are here. Uh, harder to control, Anti antibiotic permeability. Your gram positive are very permeable to most antibiotics. And again, this characteristic of your gram negative to be impermeable to many antibiotics make it very hard to 
uh, control. Sporulation, uh, like in your uh, spores, the sporulation is the production of spores. Uh, it is present in some of your gram-positive bacteria and none in your gram-negative bacteria. Exotoxin production. Okay, some will have exotoxin. Both will have some. Some species of both groups of bacteria will uh, have exotoxin produced. So, they, let us study further the internal bacterial structure. So, your nucleoid is a central region of the bacterium that contains DNA. So, it does not contain a nuclear membrane. Bacterial cells contain single chromosome composed of circular DNA molecule. Because bacterial lack of cell membrane, transcription and trans translation are coupled. That is, your ribosome-mediated protein synthesis can begin while a messenger RNA or your mRNA is being produced and is still attached to the DNA. And bacterial liposomes uh, differ in size, components and shape from eukaryotic cells. Uh, and thus are a major target of antibiotic action. So some antibiotic are geared toward bacterial ribosomes. And the presence of plasmids, which are small circular fragments of extra-chromosomal DNA, may be present often uh, carry the antibiotic resistance gene. Ribosomes, uh, uh, let's uh, discuss ribosomes now as part of the bacterial structures. Uh, major, these are major antimicrobial target. The 30 S subunits are targeted by your tetracycline and aminoglycosides. And while your 50 S subunit are targeted by chloramphenicol, and the macrolides, ketolides, and your azalides. For the bacterial envelope, bacterial cell envelope will have its, uh, it is composed of your cytoplasmic membrane and your cell wall. The cytoplasmic or cell plasma membrane is structurally similar to that of the eukaryotic cells, but it lacks sterols except in some species of your mycoplasma. The cell of your gram positive will have a thick peptidoglycan layer that forms a mesh like exoskeleton, which are essential for bacterial structure, tachoic and lipotechoic acid associated with peptidoglycan are antigenic. That will be your, the basis for your strain difference and may promote adhesion to host cells. So this is a quite a busy uh, table that uh, tells us the primary functions and the chemical constituents of the bacterial cell envelope and associated structure. So your the membrane where it is uh, it acts as the primary site of your production of energy, metabolite transport, synthesis of cell wall and capsule support. So it is composed of your phospholipid bilayer, transport proteins and enzymes. For your gram positive uh, cell wall, it will it contains your peptidoglycan, tachoic and lipotechoic acids and your proteins for your peptidoglycan. It functions as osmotic stability, structural integrity. It gives cell shape and it is the site for the permeability of your antibiotics. So it is made up of thick meshwork of peptide cross linkage polysaccharide chains. While your tachoic and lipotechoic acid, it acts as adhesion to host cells. It has a weak endotoxin activity and it is antigenic. So these are composed of polymers of substituted tripitol or glycerol phosphate. Your proteins, it has as addition to host cells and it has an antiphagocytotic uh, 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 activity and uh, is also a site for, a site for the antigenic structure and antigenic structure of the uh, gram positive bacteria examples of the chemical constituents of the streptococcal 
mnr proteins so for your gram positive bacteria gram negative bac uh, bacteria the cell wall are also composed of peptidoglycan periplasmic space outer membrane your lipopolysaccharide so for your gram negative it is lipopolysaccharide while in your gram negative these are your tachoic and lipotechoic acid and your purin channels okay for, for your peptidoglycan so it is the same as with your gram positive but it is of the thinner version okay as compared to that of your gram positive bacteria these are linked to lipoproteins that are anchored in the outer membrane your periplasmic space serves as transport of nutrients and other degradation of macromolecules while uh, the chemical will be the between cytoplasmic and outer membranes these are carrier proteins and hydrolytic enzymes which is which acts as your virulence factors the outer membrane will act as structural support uptake of metabolites permeability barrier and protection and this one uh, gives the antigenicity to the gram negative it is composed of phospholipid bilayer purines transport and other proteins and of course lipopolysaccharide now lipopolysaccharides okay this one uh, acts as for the uh, endotoxin especially your lipid a it has as anti-complement activity your o antigen so your lipid a and o antigen are found in your gram negative so it is uh, the chemical constituent it has three parts lipid a anchored to other membrane and core polysaccharide the o antigen in most the porin channels uh, the porin channels allows small and hydrophilic molecules to pass at the outer membrane it is uh, mainly composed of porin proteins other structures of the bacteria would be the capsule which has an antiphagocytic activity and it is composed of layers of polysaccharides or polypeptides the pili of fem uh, fimbri are uh, gives rise to the addition to host cells and it is also used for mating okay? so they mate Rep uh, these are composed of repeating protein subunits that pilin and adesin and the flagella flagella are motility agents or structures which are also antigenic uh, it's composed of uh, fragilin protein proceed so and let's talk about the special cell of, of your microbacterium species so your mycobacterium species is quite unique because it contains uh, the peptidoglycan of this bacteria differs slightly from the other bacteria okay it contains the wax like lipid coat that contains your mycolic acid that makes it very very unique and it makes it very very resistant okay it's responsible for the virulence and antiphagocytic activity so of the of the mycobacterium that's why it is very hard to control your corinibacterium and your nocardia species also produce mycolic acid so your mycolic acid is not exclusive to your mycobacterium but it's also shared by at, to other bacteria like your corinibacterium and your nocardia your mycobacteria and other mycolic acid protein can be identified with rather than with gram stain they are identified with acid phases The tachoic acid are present only in gram positive. Okay. okay, remember this one? Tachoic acid are only present among the gram positive. Your lipopolysaccharide and the toxin are present only in your gram negative. So that is one distinguishing characteristic of the two bacteria group of bacteria. Your gram positive contains tachoic acid, your gram negative contains your lipopolysaccharide and the toxin. Your mycoplasma, again, this one, bursts no cell wall. It doesn't have any cell wall. So as with your chlamydia, but they do have outer membrane with lipopolysaccharide, but no peptidoglycan. The polysaccharide capsules surrounding some bacteria are poorly antigenic. And poorly antigenic meaning they are not 
they are invisible or they can uh, evade uh, the system of our body to detect bacteria and also if they will be detected and try to be eaten by your macrophages they are they have an antiphagocyte so they evade also being eaten so bacteria with the prominent virus promoting capsule include would be your remember this one streptococcus pneumoniae klebsiella pneumoniae Neisseria meningitis and Haemophilus influenza type B. When encapsulated bacteria are mixed with specific anti-capsular antisera, the capsule swells. So they call it your quilang or new field reaction. So when an encapsulated bacteria so are mixed with specific anti-capsular antisera, they will swell. They call that your quilang reaction or your new field reaction. Capsular polysaccharides are used in vaccines, okay, like your strep pneumonia, the H influenza type B, and some meningococcal syrup. So let's talk about bacterial metabolism. So if uh, let's talk about the oxygen requirement of the bacteria. We say obligate aerobes are those bacteria that will require oxygen for growth, and aerobes do not require oxygen for growth, obligate anaerobes are okay, anaerobes that will die or be damaged by oxygen and this uh, obligate anaerobes are found in the, in the gastrointestinal tract, some are found in our respiratory tract and some in our skin. Aerotolerant anaerobes can survive Okay, these are unable but can survive a small amount of oxygen but they grow best if there is no oxygen while your facultative anaerobes can grow under aerobic or anaerobic condition for nutrient requirements up demanding eaters can be cultured on simple media like your E. coli, salmonella species, and gram, other gram negative enteric bacteria. While your demanding eaters require complex media containing numerous growth factors, Haemophilus and Neisseria species. For temperature requirements, most pathogenic bacteria of medical importance will grow optimally at 35 to 37 degrees centigrade, which means it nears normal body. So revision, bacteria can divide only by banning revision, a simpler process than mitotic division of the eukaryotic cells. If nutrients are available, synthesis of the new chromosome begins before previously chromosome synthesized. Synthesis is completed. Once duplication is initiated, the process is completed even when culture conditions, like your starvation, are detrimental to the cells. Synthesis of new membrane and cell wall in the center of the cell forms a septum that eventually divides the cytoplasm into two daughter cells, each containing a Next, okay, so let's talk about the spores of the bacteria. Bacteria spores are your endospores. The spores are formed by some gram positive bacteria. It represents a dormant state that is resistant, so they offer resistance to heat, drying, and chemicals. These poor formations is a variant type of cell division is induced by depletion of essential nutrients needed for normal growth. So if your bacteria are exposed to decrease in nutrients, they will form spores. Antibiotic and toxins are often produced during sporogenesis before release of spores from the bacterial cell. Germination is policy to vegetative cells, so from spores to, a, to cells is initiated by the damage of the spore caught by trauma, water, aging, and requested specific. Some plasmids, like your E. coli F factors, are episomes and which can integrate into the host chromosomes. Drug resistance genes and toxins are generated and carried by some plasmids, so plasmids get 
macular resistance. Plasmids containing resistance in are used. This is again another VC slides that tells us how can you, the different types of bacteria can enter our body. Okay, example of this uh, it can be either through ingestion, inhalation, trauma, or even we will stick at reporter animal bite, sexual transmission, and transplacental. Okay, let's just discuss on the ingestion. So this bacteria, the following, your bacillus cereus, which are found in your uh, fried rice poisoning, your brucella species, your campylobacter species, your clostridium botulinum, your E. coli, uh, especially enterotoxigenic, your listeria species, your salmonella that causes typhoid, your shigella species that causes dysentery, and your vibrio cholerae, uh, vibrio species that causes cholera. These are all bacteria that uh, can enter our body through ingestion. And inhalation, the following species are, are, can enter our body through inhalation. Your Bordatella species, your Chlamydia, pneumonia, your Cladinia cetaceae, your Legionella species, your Mycobacterium species, your Mycoplasma pneumonia, and your Nocardia species will enter the body through our nose or through inhalation. Trauma or needle sticks, your Clostridium tetany, your Pseudomonas species, and your Staphylococcus uh, aureus can enter our body through trauma or needle stick. So, and the following uh, bacteria can enter to arthropod or through uh, insects, insect bite or animal bite. So, your Borrelia species, your Coxiella species, your Elysia species, Francisella, Riquetza, and your Yersinia pestis are all bacteria that are transmitted through insect bites or animal bites. So sexually transmitted infections are samples of which would be your Glamia trochomatis, Neisseria gonorrhea, and your Treponema pallidum. And your Treponema pallidum also can be transplacentally uh, uh, can, can be transferred through the placenta. This is another slide that is uh, quite busy. So this let us talk about your endotoxin against your exotoxin. So let's uh, discuss your endotoxin and exotoxin as to their property. So your endotoxins are produced by your gram-negative bacteria. There, the genes are located in the bacterial chromosome. Then this is a part, lipid A so are part of your lipoporous saccharide in the cell wall. Cell wall. And these endotoxins are heat stable, so they are resistant to heat. They cannot be killed by it or uh, neutralized by heat. So, what are the actions of the endotoxins? It induces tumor necrosis factor alpha, interleukin 1, to interleukin 6, which always initiate in the complement and platinum pathways. The clinical effects would be. Fever, hypotension, shock, and disseminated intravascular coagulation. So, this one, this endotoxin will cause the IC, or septic shock. Okay? So, can your endotoxin be used as a vaccine? No, because their endotoxins are poorly antigenic. In comparison to your exotoxins, your exotoxins are produced by both your gram-negative and your gram-positive bacteria. So your endotoxin uh, is exclusive for your gram-negative bacteria, while your exotoxins are both coming from your gram-positive and your gram-negative bacteria. So location of the genes for your exotoxin will be your bacterial chromosome, plasmid, and bacteriophage, and they are secreted by the polypeptide and they are heat labile so they are heat labile so they can be neutralized by heat to exotoxin so what does your exotoxin do? they inhibit synthesis they block neurotransmitter release, release. they increase cyclic adenos and monophosphate level so clinical effects will depend on the type of the uh, inhibition and can they be used as vaccines? Yes, especially those are inactivated toxoids, 
because your exotoxin are highly antigenic. Okay, so continue. So here is, is a, a table that shows us the different toxins and the organisms that produces these toxins, the mode of action of these toxins, and general effects. For anthrax toxins, it has your edema factor. It is produced by your Pacidus It acts as a, it has a adenine cyclase activity and it causes localized edema and cell death. Your cholera toxins are produced by your Vivulio cholera. It turns on your stimulatory G proteins. It causes secretory diarrhea with ion loss. It causes severe dehydration. The enterotoxins, which are heat level, are produced by your E. coli. The same as with your cholera toxin, turns on your stimulatory G protein. And the same with your cholera, it acts as secretory, uh, brings about secretory diarrhea with ion loss. How about your pertussis toxins, which are produced by your bordatella pertussis? Turns off okay, your G protein causes loss of fluids and electrolytes and lymphocytosis, mucous secretion in the respiratory tract. Okay. Those that act on the inhibition of protein synthesis, your diphtheria, exotoxin, and your cigatoxin, your diphtheria toxins are produced by your corinobacterium diphtheriae. It uh, acts by production of adenosine diphosphate ribosylate PF2. It causes cell death leading to disease symptoms. Your exotoxin A are produced by your pseudomonas, the same as with the yeah, mode of housing, the same as with diphtheria toxin. It, also, it causes cell death and your shiga toxins are produced by your shigella dysenteria. It leaves 28S recombinant DNA, RNA and causes cell death, causes what is diarrhea, hemolytic uremic syndrome. So there are two bacteria that causes altered transmission of nerve impulses. These are your Clostridium botulinum and your tetanum. Your Clostridium botulinum produces uh, botulinum toxin, so it prevents release of your acetylcholine. So it causes flaccid, flaccid paralysis. As in contrast with your Clostridium tetany, which produces your tetanus toxin, it now prevents the release of neurotransmitters from inhibitory neurons causing the condition of spastic paralysis. So your uh, Clostridium botulinum causes flaccid paralysis while your tetanus toxin causes spastic So we're nearing the, the last slide. So gram positive bacteria in, 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 uh, in review. So these are your encapsulated bacteria, your gram positive bacteria, your Bacillus anthracis, Bacillus subtilis, Staph aureus, Strep agalactiae, Strep pneumoniae, and your Strep pyogenes. Your gram-negative bacteria, which are encapsulated, are your Bacteria fragilis, Campylobacter fetus, Scherichia coli, Haemophilus influenzae, Lebsella pneumoniae, Neisseria gonorrhea, Neisseria meningitis, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Salmonella species, and your Yersinia pestis. Okay, so that's it for today's lesson and I'll see you on your, in your next class.